Good morning and welcome to Workforce Skills with John Morse. Another work week hitting us. It's going to be a busy one. Today's Monday. Uh, we started our onboarding with some new employees this morning. We hired five guys. They all showed up today at six o'clock to go through our onboarding program from six to eight, and then they were assigned projects to go out to work at. So we, we're starting this new onboarding training, how we start our employees. A little uh, better transparency, a little bit of preparation before they get on a job site. Used to be we would just hire somebody, send them right out to the job the next day. So that's what we're trying to change. You know, we're, we're trying to figure out how to create more value in the company, more value in our employees. So how do we do that? So part of it is being a little more transparent with the employees as we hire them on. Okay, here's where we're at as a company. Here's what we're doing. Here's how we're trying to grow. So in our conference room slash classroom, I've, I've got these five guys. We're sitting there. We're going over the job duties of what a painter requires. We're going over the job duties of what a crew leader requires. And in doing this, it sets them up for the expectations of what their job is going to be, what is needed out there. Now, on these two descriptions, there's nothing that talks about painting. Not a thing. Just talks about their day, how they're going to set up their day, what they're going to do, how they're going to um, show up with their tools, how they're going to clock in, um, who the crew leader is. How do you deal with a situation when there's other trades working in the same area that you need to work in? So as we're discussing this and going through this, they're asking questions, which w there were some good questions. There were some questions that, you know, it made me wonder what kind of companies they worked with before that made them think this. Um, two of the guys that were in there worked for the same company prior to us. And they had worked uh, for two weeks with this other company and still have not been paid. Um, the, the guy is not paying them. So what kind of value does that give that, that contractor? You know, that word gets out there and now other people aren't going to want to work for them. Don't work for this guy. Waiting to get paid. It's been a week and I, I, he still owes me for two weeks and I haven't seen a paycheck yet. You know, he, he's saying, and their excuse was that uh, some of the homeowners, he does residential, some of the homeowners uh, canceled their deposit, you know, so he's losing jobs because of that. Well, that tells me the guy doesn't know how to handle his business financially, that he's living off of deposits on jobs he hasn't done yet to help provide for the company. That's not how you want to survive as a business. So what kind of value does that show as a, as a company, as a business? You know, but let's talk about the value that an employee brings. How do you scale? How do you grade the value of each person as they're coming on board? A lot of times we ask you, can you brush? Can you roll? Can you spray? What's your experience? And that's how we justify the value of what we're going to pay an employee. Now, a lot of these guys come in and I don't know what they can do. It's very difficult. You have a guy walking in the door. He fills out an application. I sit down with him. There's certain questions I can ask you know, to determine whether he knows the, the lingo or the verbiage of what we're doing. Uh, for example, someone who can spray, what size tip do you use? You know, I'll ask what size tip do you use to spray a entry door? What size tip do you use if you're spraying the exterior of a stucco building or a tilt up building? And it's interesting how many guys don't know the answer to that, or they come up with an answer that makes no sense. And guys will say, well, um, somebody else always set up the spray machine for me. If you have the experience that you say you do, that would not be the case. So now I'm re-evaluating the situation. I'm looking at these guys and how do we determine the value of what they can do? So I figured that with our onboarding process, I'm going to bring some value of my company to them first. I'm going to show them the value of working here. I'm going to show them the structure how we, we run a job, how we do things. And in doing that, it's going to create some value on their end. They're going to go out there and be more apt to work for us harder. They're going to understand the, the culture of the company. By showing them the culture of the company first, that's showing value in what we have, what we've created over the years. I want them to know the company that they're working for. I want them to know that the company they're working for isn't going to screw them on a paycheck on Friday. That's how I want to prove to them the value, the value that they bring. What kind of professional am I hiring? You know, well, someone might say, well, it's just labor. It's just painters. You don't need to be professional. But no, we do need to be professional. I think showing them the professionalism of me and the company on this onboarding shows them the value of what they're getting into. 
and how we are professional. What professionalism can they bring to the table? By sitting there and spending two hours with these guys, I can see the way they talk, the way they act. How many times is a guy looking at his phone? The whole time during this two hours, not once, I think, did they ever look at their phones. It showed that they were intent on what we were offering them. It showed the professionalism of each person, the language that they use, the eye contact. That shows professionalism. What other values are there in professionalism? It's how you treat people. It's how you talk to people. You know, we discussed how on a job site you're going to deal with situations. How are you going to handle these situations? What happens if you get to a job site and you feel like you're doing all the work? This person's not working up to my level. You know, it's, I don't want them to start thinking, well, I don't have to do the work. You know, we talked about quality over quantity. I'm looking for quality on a job, not the quantity of what you can do. I'm looking for people that show up on time every day, guys that have the proper tools for the job. That's what we're looking for in the value and the professionalism of what they bring to the table. I'm now showing them what I bring to the table. Now it's time for them to go out there today and show us what they, their value is. How professional can they be out there? Prior to them leaving, I called each job site, talked to each lead crew leader on the job site, let them know who is coming out there. They're prepared for it. It's all about preparedness to get them ready to go out there on the job site. So it shows a completely different level of professionalism than we've had in the past, where in the past they come in, they fill out their paperwork, we hire them, okay, you'll start tomorrow. You'll get a job text tonight. It's going to show you where to go. Just click on the maps and, and, and get yourself there. They heard me on the phone, and I had each person on speaker as I was setting them up to go out to that job site. That shows a different level of professionalism. We work out of an office. We have an office space. Now, I know a lot of companies don't. There could be some smaller companies out there that run out of their garages or their home, and that's fine. But to come into our place of business, and we have a front office, we have a receptionist, we have a classroom training room, that shows a different level of professionalism. Walk them through the warehouse. Show them how we're set up. Show them how we do things. As a project manager popped his head in the, in the classroom, introduced each person that came through the room to, to the new group of people coming on board. So they know what they're getting into. They know how we operate. They can see the level of professionalism that we bring to the table. That's what we're looking for. So the question today is, how professional are you going to be out there? What are you looking to do? What kind of value do you bring to the job site? You know, we all want to work for somebody that, that shows value to us, and that's in a paycheck. The value that a company brings is their paycheck. Can they guarantee I'm going to get paid every Friday? I've got a couple of guys that came on board with us because they didn't have that guarantee where they were at. There's no value in the company they came from. There's no professionalism in the company they were working at. One of the guys got three phone calls that he declined while he was sitting there. All three phone calls were from the previous company. The guy wanted to know where he's at today. Well, how do you expect your guys to show up if they're not getting paid? I'm not going to show up if you're not paying me. No one would. Why would you show up for somebody that's not going to pay you? There's no guarantee. There's no promises. It makes zero sense in my mind whatsoever as a business. You know, we, we have to be financially secure in our businesses. We have to, we got to create a situation where we can support our business for a couple months. You got to be able to support your payroll for a couple months. And it's hard getting to that level. It's hard getting to that point to where you have that security, but you have to create that as a business owner. That shows value in you and your business. That's what we have to, we have to look for. You know, it, it's, it's interesting how we, we measure our value in our children and our families and our wives, our partners, you know, by what we get back. We have to start looking at the value that we bring to the table. Stop looking for the value in everything else. We need to start taking an inner look as what value do I bring to my, my household? What value do I give to my children? How do they see the value in me? What am I offering them? And in return, what do we look for? Their love and support. So we're looking for something in return. We don't expect the value right up front. We have to show our value first to receive value back. That's in any relationship, any situation. Now, some people might perceive it differently, but for, for me, you know, what value am I bringing to my household? What value do I bring to our financial situation in my relationship with my wife and my relationship with my, my, 
my daughter, my relationship with my grandson. You know, you only get out of it what you put into it. So if you're working in a situation and you don't feel like you're being valued, if you feel like you're not being given anything in return, start to look at yourself and say, well, what can I show? What can I do to create more value in myself? And with that, it could be training. So when it comes to training, let's think about this for a minute. What about the existing employees? And we have new people coming on board. You know, how many guys out there look at these new guys? Well, I'm not here to train, and I, I'm, I'm going to test them, see what they can do. Ask them what they can do, and understand that if they don't understand what to do, explain to them. We're teaching our new guys coming on, if you don't know something, ask. You know, the only stupid question is the one you don't ask. So as a current employee working for me, you're going to have more experience. You're going to understand the culture. You're going to understand what's going on. We're teaching our guys as new people come on, there's a possibility they might know more than you or they might know less than you. How do you work with them? How do you get them to your level? The goal for me is to bring everybody up and make everybody equals. I want to bring everybody up to my level. So as a painter in the field, I want my guys currently working out there knowing that I'm bringing on new people, knowing that some of these guys have less experience than them, and they need help, they need guidance. That's how we train within the field. We have to be open to training everybody. Now, we hire some people, they might have more experience than the people on the crew. What we teach them coming on board is we let them know, even this morning, you might be on a crew and there's going to be guys out there and you might have more experience than them. I want you to get out there and just learn. We're going to guide you on how our system works first. And as we see what we can do, our, our superintendents are going to give you more direction. They're going to give you more leadership roles. You'll eventually move up to a crew leader faster. Part of growth is being able to work with people, train people, and at the same time, understand that new people coming on can still train you. We don't know everything. That's the culture we're, we're creating within the business. We're creating a culture of training everybody at no matter what level they're at. But as current employees and employees coming on, we have to learn to work together. We can learn from each other. There's growth in that. There's value in that. We have to look at continued growth within a company. If not, we become stagnant. We, we become complacent. You know, that's one thing I've had to realize here recently is our training. You know, I've been doing training for so many years now between our vocational program and what we're doing. And now I'm taking a step back and looking at the next level of training. Part of the next level of training is within the company itself. You know, we always did training before guys came on board with us. We did it through the vocational program. But now it's time for me to reevaluate and look at the importance of the training within the business. How, to, how do we change the culture of learning within our company? You know, part of it with me is having once a month training with our crew leaders. It's the onboarding process, the training, and giving them the guidance of where they're going to be, what they need to learn coming on board with us. The importance of it for me is with our superintendents, our project managers, our office staff. You know, it's, it's with the, the education of reading a book. You know, it's, I bought enough books of John C. Maxwell, The 21 Laws of Leadership, to give to each employee on management in our, our company. And each week we have to read so much and we talk about it in our weekly meetings. You know, this last week we assigned two chapters. And tomorrow in our Tuesday meeting, we will be discussing those chapters, what we learned from it. And it's interesting as you start to create this culture of learning, this culture of training and growth, that people will start doing it on their own. One of my superintendents over the weekend, you know, texted me and said, hey, I'm going to shop. I'm going to wash out my truck, clean it, and I'm going to swing by Barnes & Nobles, and I want to pick up a couple books. And then later that evening, he texted me a picture of the two books that he got. No one forced him to do it. No one told him to do it. And that's the culture of learning, of training your employees. It'll start to happen on its own. You're going to see a change that, that's going to morph. And it's not going to be every employee. And you might not see a significant change right away. And it could be a slow growth, a slow change. But you will start to see signs of change, of growth, from just starting to train your people of your, your, your people wanting to learn more, to become better, 
better at their job, wanting to move up in position. And it's interesting how just one book has now created a situation where guys are going and buying their own books to learn, to educate themselves, to become better individuals in their jobs, in their lives, as a father, as mothers. You know, it's it's changing the growth and the culture within itself. It's morphing into something bigger that I didn't even expect that was going to happen. And this change, it's it's a beautiful thing to watch. And if we would just step back and realize, and I think it starts with me as the owner first, realizing that I need to change. I need some growth. I need to find some mentorship for myself, and I need to read more to, to start to become better at what I'm doing. I think if we hit a point to where we realize, well, first of all, let's step back a minute. If we hit a point to where we think we know everything, that's when you're doomed. You can't ever think you know everything. Nobody knows everything, and we all have room for growth. We all have room to learn and educate ourselves. And if it starts with just picking up a book, if it starts from going to a seminar, if it starts from watching YouTube videos on different things, you have to start somewhere. So the training process within the company is starting. The growth is starting. The learning culture is starting, and it's going to morph into something even bigger. And as we continue, I have to look for other ways to train, other ways of growth. How can I continue this training? How can I continue the culture of growth within a company? As we do this, we'll start to see signs of it. And we're going to see signs that's going to bring more value to the company. And you have to be open to listen to the employees. You have to be open to listen to everybody within a company. What do they bring to the table? What training do they need? Maybe it starts by just asking your employees, what do you need help with? What do you need help in training and growth within a company that's going to make you a better asset? What's going to, what value can I bring with training and learning to the employee? And with the ideas that they bring, that's value in itself. The value is going to continue. Now you're creating a system. You're creating a company that's always going to continue to grow. It's never going to stop. It's just going to continue to get bigger and stronger as a collective that you never thought it could be. I don't know where this leads. I don't know what it's creating for the company. All I know is I'm seeing growth. I'm seeing change. And it's happening within a couple of weeks. It's happening so subtle that all of a sudden it's like, oh, my goodness, things are changing. People are changing. You see the motivation. You see the attitudes. You see, you see the mentality of everybody starting to go a different direction. You start to see a change of everybody getting on the same page. It's creating a sense of loyalty within the, in the company. The whole mentality, their loyalty is changing where they want to be a part of something bigger. They want to be part of something more that's going to change. And I think there's so many companies out there that don't show that value to their employees. And you wonder why, as employers, why we're not growing, why we become stagnant, why we can't retain employees. Well, start to train the employees. Stop trying to motivate people and hire motivated people and then teach them and train them. I want people who are excited to come on board. By the time we were done with our onboarding this morning with the, with the five guys that came on board with us, you could see the change in their attitude, their mentality. You know, it's like they came in not knowing what to expect and they left there. You could see the excitement as they're leaving for their jobs. As they got their hard hat and safety vest and safety glasses and company shirts, you could see the change in them. It's almost like these five guys that didn't even know each other, only two of them knew each other, but they were almost becoming a team right there in front of me. The change happens right in front of your eyes and you don't even realize it's changing and happening. The growth is happening right there in front of you. All you have to do is watch and it's going to happen. But it starts with you as the owner of a company changing a culture of learning, training, showing value to your employees. Give them the value so they stay with you. Show them that value. But then as time goes on and the employee now shows you the value of what they bring to the table, you have to compensate them for this. You have to pay them more. You have to give them the value of what they're worth. You have to give them something in return for their value that they're bringing. But how can you expect them to bring value to a company if you're not showing them value first? That's with anything. Like I said, it's with any relationship. It's with any situation. How can you expect value returned to you if you're not showing your value first? That's anywhere in life. 
you're not going to get paid what you want. You're not going to retain the employees what you want until you start showing the value of your company, of what your, your company's worth. I'm going to create a new value in my company that is not even, you can't even put a dollar figure to. And it all has to do with changing the culture. It all has to do with changing the training, the learning process of what we do. I am now open to anybody's ideas within our company. What do you need for training? We're going to make it possible. One of my guys mentioned something about budgeting. He struggles budgeting his money. All right, maybe we bring in a financial advisor. Maybe we do a budgeting class. What do I offer them to show the value of what we're bringing? This guy can't save money. He's broke every Monday after he gets paid on Friday. And I've got a few people like that. They're embarrassed to admit it. You know, how can I help them? How can I mentor them or show them what we're doing to create value within the company? How do I create that culture? You know, how can you have one guy making this wage and, you know, he's been in the business the same amount of time as this other guy and he's now renting an apartment, thinking about buying a house and the other guy can barely pay his rent each, each month. It doesn't make sense. Now, I know they each one probably has different life choices. They spend their money differently. But how can I mentor them or how can I bring someone in to guide them and teach them how to budget their money? What kind of value does that bring to us as a business to help these guys? How about teaching them how to invest? How about teaching them about credit scores? How many people out there don't even know how to create a better credit score? or know how to create a better credit score by using your credit cards the right way. A lot of people don't understand money. You know, that's the one thing I look back at schools and what we're being taught in schools. I think some of the stuff we need to be teaching our young kids is money, how to budget, how to make money work for us. Teach them about stocks and bonds and other investments and how to create more wealth out of the wealth that they have. We need to start changing the way we look at every situation. We need to start teaching our guys how to make money. We need to start bringing that value to them. I want to teach them how to invest. I want to teach them how to raise their credit scores. Teach them how to go buy a vehicle and not have to have a co-signer. How can we create that value within our company? That's the direction we need to go. And some people might say, oh, that's too much work. I don't have time. I'm worried about landing the next job and doing this. Well, then find someone to help you do it. Find someone to help you grow the value in your company. Some people are leaders. Some people are managers. Some people are trainers. Find the right person for each position. Some people can't wear multiple hats. And some owners of a company know how to run a business, but they don't know how to be the business or make the business work for you or to train people. You know, it's interesting how many guys I've seen in my business alone as painters that they are the best painters out there. And they think they can go start a business and they fail miserably because they don't understand money. They don't understand how to run a business. How can we teach these guys those, those lessons? I want to teach guys working for me on how to go start their own business, how to create their own business, their own culture, their own destiny. It's not just about me. And in turn, I think that creates a value within my industry, within our geographical area that we're working in. I want more people to raise the bar, raise the level of what they're doing. If I can get more people on board with the way we're running our company, that means we just raise a bar out there for the whole industry. There are a lot of hacks out there in our business. There's a lot of hacks in any business for that matter. Guys that are just barring from Peter to pay Paul, they're barely paying their, 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 their employees what they're worth. We need to eliminate that. That doesn't mean they're never going to go away. They're, you're always going to have that part of the system in this business. But how do we change our learning, our training, our culture? Find somebody to talk to. Um, when I went to the, the Cardone Ventures uh, 10X 360, they were talking about trainual.com or something like that. There was a new uh, group out there. They will create a training system specifically for your business of what your needs are for each level of the business. You know, so there are companies out there, there are programs out there to help you and guide you in every industry. I know the PCA, Painting Contractors of America, they have um, a program set up to where you can go online and do their training uh, programs within their system as a member of that. You know, that's just in the painting industry. I know there's different things out there. There's trade schools. 
find ways to train your people. Bring them in and watch YouTube videos on how to, in the painting, how to clean a, a spray rig. We had a spray rig get returned to our office the other day, our shop, and it was still full of paint. And the guy that did it said he had 10 years experience. I'm calling BS on that. There's no way that's possible. Not the way this machine came back to us. It's not even possible. Level five drywall. We had another guy in a Better Buzz Coffee we were painting, and this guy was using a three-quarter inch nap on level five drywall. You were going to leave a stip on that thing like no other, and that's not what you're supposed to use. And this guy had 12 years experience. How can you be a painter like that and not have the experience? The only thing I can chalk it up to, they weren't trained. Nobody trained them the right way. But they came in with this much experience. They think they can do everything. But as we train people, we also have to be humble and realize we're going to get some pushback. There's going to be guys, oh, you don't need to teach me everything. I know, anything. I know everything. That's not the case. I want guys that are going to be humble. I want guys that are going to be trainable. I want guys that are willing to learn and grow. That's what we're looking for. I want guys that can grow with us, that I can show you them the value of the training process that we're putting in place, and in turn, they can bring more value to the company. There's more value to themselves. And here's the deal. I know everybody's not going to work for me for the rest of their lives, but I want to know that when they leave our company, there's other companies that are dying to hire my guys because of the training process we have, because they know that the system we put in place, the training system we put, brought so much value that they want our employees because they know they're going to be top-notch. That's the word that I want to get out there. That's the culture I want to bring to my company in this business. Imagine you create a culture and a training system within your company, in your area, whatever it is, whether it's plumbing, framing, drywall, electrical. You have such a system that guys are doing whatever they can to headhunt your employees because they know they're the best of the best. What does that say about you and your business and the value that you bring to the industry? What's that say to the general contractors out there that now want to hire you because they know the systems that you bring, the value that you bring? I want general contractors to look at me. No, we, we, want, we want John's company. We don't want anybody else. The value they bring, the security that we bring to the job site. They know we're going to finish on time. They know that our employees know what they're doing. They know our employees are going to be respectful out there. They know the culture that we bring. That's what we're trying to change. That's the value I want to see within my business. That's the value I want to see within this industry. That's the value that everybody needs to bring to the table. The value that comes with all this creates a new level of professionalism within your company. People are going to look at your companies different. People are going to look at your employees different. You as employees out there, it's going to bring more value to you. The one thing we have to remember, though, is as we're doing this, as we're working out there, we have to keep our emotions out of the workplace. The workplace is a place of business. The workplace is a place of professionalism. What happens when we bring our emotions into the workplace? How destructive can that be? You know... Uh, an example would be, you know, I had a guy working for me about a year ago, and he had been dating this girl for about a month, and he called up on Monday and said he couldn't come into work. He was up in his head. I asked him, what's wrong? Do you need to talk? And he goes, my girlfriend broke up with me. I can't handle coming to work today. I'm just too depressed. And I said, well, why don't you come to the office? Let's sit down and talk. And you know, it's it's difficult when I look at a situation like that because I've got my own personal opinions. Believe me, there's things I want to say that I'm not going to. And then I have to be professional about it. And I have to keep the emotional side out of a situation like that. But in a, bringing your emotions to work is not good. So was it best for him to stay home? <clears throat> Probably because he would have been useless at work that day. But at the same time, what does that say about him as an individual and his emotions and what's going to happen as this guy progresses with the company and moves up in position? Now I have to evaluate how his emotional decisions are going to affect the workplace. We can't have that in the workplace. And I'm not trying to discount his feelings or what he's going through. 
and I do have compassion for him and empathy, but at the same time, that doesn't need to come to work. And for him to let that affect his work is very disappointing. We have to look at these situations and how are we going to deal with them? You know, I, I train my superintendents who oversee multiple jobs in a day. They can have a situation on a job site. And they have to go to the next job site. And they might, might have just had a situation right there where they got upset. They got an angry general contractor or superintendent on the job site with them. And now they have to go to the next job site to deal with a different situation. They have to put what just happened in the back of their mind. They can't carry that situation to the next job site. They have to go to the next job site with a clean slate and deal with those situations on that job site completely different. Now, he'll have to come back to that first job and deal with it. There might be things lingering that he has to handle later, but you can't let your emotions or a situation carry from job to job. You can't bring your home life to work and let it affect you there. You can't let your work what your work life affect you on a job site. I can't take my situations from work home to my wife and take it out on her and get angry or the kids or any or my dogs. And I can't have a situation at home where I'm frustrated or say me and my wife had a situation and I bring that to work and it's frustrating me and it affects my decision making at work. You have to find a balance between the two. Your feelings and emotions do matter. Everybody's does. But I think we're living in a time where I think we've let our feelings and emotions take control of everything. And we have to step back and take a look at how to control those, how to control ourselves, how to control our actions and our reactions. How am I going to react to a situation at work? Am I going to let a situation at work affect me so bad that I'm going to take it out on other people? That's not fair. That's not right. It's wrong. I can't let a situation at home affect me at work where I'm going to take it out on somebody. I have to treat each individual respectfully. And I can't have a situation with one person and treat somebody else a different way because of that person. So how do we check ourselves? How do we keep ourselves in balance? You know, I had an employee this morning. I called and I said, hey, I got someone I just onboarded. They're coming out to your job site today. Um, I want you to get him going. Here's what, his name. Here's what's happening. Okay, John, no problem. Hey, um, I'm in the middle of a situation. I was wondering if I can call you later and talk a little bit. I said, no problem. Give me a call. We'll sit down. We'll talk about it. I'll help you through it. And But don't let it affect you at work today. That's all I said to him. Okay, I won't, John. We'll, we'll, we'll talk later. I, I can deal with this. And it's just that little guidance that will help somebody get through something. How can we help people get through their situations at work? How can we be compassionate towards our employees when they're struggling with something? You know, it, it's I've had guys come to work, and, and I they've had situations, deaths in the family divorces, kids that are sick that are in the hospital. How do you deal with these situations? You have to be considerate of what they're going through. Different people, different situations are going to be handled differently. We're going to talk. Are you able to come to work? Do you think you can handle working today? If you can't, stay home. You have sick time accrued. Are you able to use that right now? Let's evaluate each situation differently. We have to evaluate each person's situation differently and what they're going through, what they're dealing with. You have to have empathy for these people. You have to be considerate and think about what they're going through. I'm not going to force someone to come to work if their head is so screwed up because of a situation they're going through. That's not right. That's not fair. I'm not going to fire someone for that. I'm not going to hold it against them. But at the same time, as an employee... We have to consider our job. How is my boss going to look at me if I just caught sick with no reason or if I just don't show up? A simple phone call, hey, I can't come in today. I had a family situation. I can't explain right now. I'm not going to make it, but I'll call you as soon as I get freed up. That's considerate of your employer. You need to handle your situations different as employees. I can't begin to tell you how many times, and I, pr I brought it up before, how many guys call out with a flat tire. Be honest about your situation. Be honest about what's causing you not to show up at work. 
If you have a sick child, you can't come into work, just call in and say, hey, my child's sick. My wife can't miss another day or she's going to lose her job. Would it be okay if I stay home? I'm in this situation. We're going to be considerate of every situation. I'm not going to hold this against you. And your employer should not either. Most people are compassionate. Most people will have empathy for, towards you, and they're going to be considerate of your, your feelings and emotions. I understand what it's like to go through these situations. You would be surprised at how many people out there have been through the same situation you've been through. When you think nobody else understands you, well, no one else has been through this, I guarantee you people have been through it. We've all been through tough situations. I was going through a point where I had employees working for me, and my son was in the hospital with leukemia. I was going through a situation to where I had to spend more time at the hospital than I was in the job sites with my son. I went through the passing of my son while running a job, while out doing estimates, where I had to get to the hospital, and he was on life support, and I had to deal with this and still run my business and run the company. And it was very, very difficult. How I made it through those times, I couldn't even tell you. I just pushed through. I don't know how I made it. But when they say take it a day at a time, step at a time, sometimes you got to take it a second at a time. No one is going to hold anything against you for how you feel or your emotions or your feelings when you're going through situations. If anything, I understand what it's like to deal with these situations. I've been through a divorce. I've been through the loss of a child. I've been through loss. I've been through situations. I've been through having family members in car accidents and dealing with that while at work. I guarantee you, whatever you think someone's not going to understand or my boss isn't going to understand, I guarantee you they will. But in doing this, just be honest about it. We don't need to lie about our situations why we're missing work or why we're dealing with certain situations. There's a time and place. My office door is always open for my employees to come talk to me about anything they're going through. And I've heard some weird stuff. It's People have gone through some strange situations. There's been stuff I haven't been through. I get it. But I guarantee you that I can listen and I can understand and I can work with them through it. We will find a way to get through your situation. And if you're working for someone that just doesn't care and all they're worried about is the bottom line, that dollar, and they don't care about you, you need to find somewhere else to go. Find a company that's going to have a good culture. They're going to train you. They're going to teach you. They're going to grow with you. They want you to grow within the company. You want to work for a company that's going to bring value to your life and you can show them the value and get rewarded for it. That's what this is about. You know, I, I, I tell people when, when, when it comes to painting, I don't see color. I don't care if you're black, white, brown, what race you are, what female, male. It's only one color I see green, money. And that's what we're in this for. We're in this to make money. I'm in this to make money, and my employees working for me are in this to make money. So how can I show them more money? By showing them more value in the company, by training them better. So in turn, they bring more value to the company. And I can, in return, give them the value of a bigger paycheck or a bigger bonus. How can you today, as an employer out there with your employees, bring value to your company? I want all you that listen to me on a weekly basis that own a company, I want you to start thinking about, am I really bringing value to Am I really showing the value to my employees, my, my business, my company? How can I enhance the value of my company so in turn we can enhance the value of our employees that work for us? How can I bring more training? How can I bring more learning tools to the business to help grow the business, to grow as a team, to grow as a collective? We need to go back to basics when it comes to training. We need to go back to basics when it comes to learning. How can we change the culture in our business, change the value? What can we do to train? I want to bring more value, and in turn, I'm going to listen to 
everything that every employee brings to the table with me. It's an open conversation when we have these situations in the, in the workplace, when we have meetings, when we have training sessions. You know, it's after our last crew training, I mentioned to everybody, if there's anything you guys want to learn, any training you want, any value you want to see the company bring to you, let us know, and we're going to make that a possibility for you. That's the goal. The goal is to bring a different level of value to everybody within the company. So the question I have for everybody today before we run off here, what value do you bring to the company? And what value is your employer bringing to you? And you guys out there that run your own businesses, let's start to think how we can change the value that we bring to the table. Not just a paycheck for your employees. Because then they're only looking at you as a paycheck. They're only there for a paycheck. They're not going to try harder. They're not going to work harder. It starts with us before we hire the guys. It starts with us. What kind of training are we bringing? What kind of value do we give to the employees? That's what you have to start asking yourself. Once again, thanks for joining us today. Stay hungry.